Hi right, Chelsea fans, this is the latest five minute video on the channel, just five minutes and we get straight to the point with no waffle or BS and we're going to talk about the transfer window for Chelsea that's just closed yesterday and you have to say it hasn't been bad. Let's get cracking. Welcome along guys, if this is your first time here then welcome to the channel. Hopefully you enjoy the video. If you do, drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel, but make sure you hit the bell for notifications. So, transfer windows. When the season finishes or in January, you look at your current Chelsea squad and you think, how can we improve it? What do we need to just do a little bit better here? And the whole sort of thought process about last season, the whole feeling about the squad last season, despite the fact we just amazingly won the Champions League, got a top four finish, got to the FA Cup final. It was the fact it just lopsided. Three left, left backs or left wing backs, five centre backs, only three midfielders, and only sort of three out and out wide players. It just looked a bit unbalanced for me. Of course, when the season finishes and we move into this summer, there's all sorts of rumours with people that Chelsea are being linked with. Who could we possibly sign? There's obviously the situation regarding Declan Rice and 100 million that West Ham want and Chelsea were never going to entertain that amount of money. Obviously the Haaland I spoke on this channel, we were never going to sign Haaland because of his agent and the fact Chelsea refused to pay his agent the amount of money he wanted and the reported £800,000 a week wages. Haaland was never going to happen. Then there's Jules Kundi late on and Sevilla. Getting a little bit of itchy feet, squeaky bum maybe when Chelsea went in with the money that they originally wanted. They then upped their price and Chelsea said, hold on, not going to pay 20 million more, whatever it was, 15 million more. Duff it, basically, and we're going to keep our own. Because let's face it, Trevor Chaloba has been great so far in the games he's played this season. And he's now earned his place in the squad. Believe it or not, we've still got five centre-backs, even without Kundi. So for me, the defence was set. It was, it was always about Chelsea improving in midfield and in the attacking area. A striker, an imposing physical striker up front. Because let's face it, that's not Timo Werner's game. It's not Kai Havertz's game either. And we needed that physical striker up front. And to Chelsea's credit, Marina Granovskaya's credit and the Chelsea board and Roman Abramovich and everybody else linked with recruitment at our club. What a fantastic job they've done. Willy Caballero decided to, to leave the club. Fair play to him. He'd been a great servant. So we signed Marcus Bettinelli as a replacement. Good business. We then look at the striker situation and we bring back Romelu Lukaku, who has gone away from Chelsea in the, the time that he's taken away. He's gone away, developed, most importantly, the last couple of seasons, developed the other side of the game, not just the physicality and the technical attributes, but the mental side of the game and how to, to lead the line properly under Antonio Conte. And he's back at our club as a much more all-rounded centre-forward and we're looking for massive things from him. He guarantees you goals. He's going to score you goals. A great, great signing. Then last night, it was, was it going to happen? No, yes, it might do. Thal Niguez comes in, a 26-year-old midfielder from Atletico Madrid, who's featured a couple of hundred games for Atletico Madrid. Was deemed as someone that Atletico wanted to get rid of this season to get him off the wage bill, so it turns out to bring back Griezmann, believe it or not. And he was made available when Chelsea went in. There's talk today regarding the Gola Conte and his injuries, and the fact we had to have that fourth midfielder to come in and cover any eventuality that Conte was missing and Niguez fits the bill. He can play as a central midfielder, a box-to-box -box midfielder or a defensive midfielder with absolute quality, it has to be said. And what a sign it is. You look at Chelsea's business and you look at the squad as I said and you're thinking, plug those gaps in your squad. Get rid of the dead wood and we've done that and we plugged the gaps we had, the midfield and centre forwards. Despite spending nearly 98 million on Lukaku, Chelsea are making a profit of 30 million. Outstanding business from Chelsea, and our squad looks better than it did last season. We've got more options in centre midfield, and we've got a physical presence up front who's gonna bang the goals in left, right and centre. And that of course means in the wide area, Timo Werner can operate if we need him to, which he probably will. Overall, what a transfer window for Chelsea. I was a little bit concerned when I looked at other clubs and what they were signing, but when Lukaku was done and then Sal Niguez has come in last minute, we just look great. We look great, we look set, and it's got to be second place this season as a minimum with a title challenge. It's got to be. Ourselves and Man City have got by far the best squads, the most depth in the squads. You can pick two 11s from both squads 
to go out and compete in the Premier League. And it's outstanding business from Chelsea. So I just want to do that video, five minute video today, talking about the window. What do you guys think? Have your say in the comment section below. If you like the idea of a five minute video, drop a like on it, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think. Have a fantastic rest of your day and rest of the week. And I'll be back later on this week with another five minute video. So take care of yourselves. See you soon.